Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the 8-Bit Doe N30. This is their arcade stick that they came up with recently, and this connects up with a PC or an Android device or a Raspberry Pi. Uh, basically anything that takes a Bluetooth connection should work with it. But it also works with the Nintendo Switch, which might be fun for some of the fighting games that they have on that platform and maybe some of the shoot 'em ups as well. Uh, so we'll take a look at how it works with the Switch and some of these other platforms in just a minute. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed this content before I uploaded it. So let's get to it and see what this thing is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This normally costs about $79, but I got it for about 50 bucks. And then about a day after I bought it, it went back up to its $79 price again on Amazon. So I think this might be something that fluctuates a bit and you may wanna keep an eye on it to see if you can get a good deal. Now, if you've been following some of these inexpensive arcade sticks lately, uh, you might've seen the Mayflash F300. Uh, that is almost the same product as this one insofar as its physical hardware is concerned. But this one is a little different inside because it has a Bluetooth radio built in so it can go wireless to all the devices that you plug it into. It also has a battery because to be wireless it can't be plugged in so that's another thing that it has. It also supports the Nintendo Switch which the Mayflash does not. Uh, the Mayflash does, though, support the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, which this doesn't. So it, you're going to have to kind of figure out what your needs are. Uh, but if you don't need to use it wirelessly or with the Switch, uh, the Mayflash costs $59. But again, it is a wired connection up to the device that you wish to connect it with. I am very pleased with the hardware overall. It's got a very nice weight to it. It doesn't slide around on my desk here at all, even when you're really uh, working on it here. So it really has a very firm footing, a very nice weight to it, very heavy, uh, which is I think what you want in some kind of arcade stick like this one. And I was very pleased with that. I like the joystick here. As you can hear, it clicks around quite a bit, which is nice. So it's got mechanical switches in there. The buttons have a little less tactile feel than I would have liked. I'm getting used to it now, but I would have liked to have had a little more travel maybe or some more of a, more of a feedback to it when I push the button down to know that I'm uh, hitting it correctly. But you can uh, actually change out all of this stuff. They make it very easy to change out the buttons. There are some arcade buttons that are highly sought after by arcade enthusiasts that I believe this will work with. So you do have some flexibility on uh, upgrading it later if you want. Now you also have the option to use the controller as a wired one and you can do that through the USB connector here on the back. Uh, this is an A to A connector here, so you'll get an A to A cable in the box to facilitate that connection. I was able to get it to work successfully with my Switch plugged in along with my PC plugged in, but my NVIDIA Shield did not like it plugged in. It preferred the wireless connection. I couldn't get it to work wired. I do believe, though, it'll work with a wired connection on a Raspberry Pi, or at least that's what they say in their uh, instruction book there. Uh, there is some additional controls here on the top that you should be aware of. The first switch here involves what to do when it's plugged into a PC. Uh, so right now it's on X input mode, and this means that when it's connected up to a PC, whether it's via Bluetooth or with the wire, it's going to essentially simulate an Xbox One controller. So you'll have uh, all the X input compatibility for your Windows games. If you are connecting it to a non-Windows device like an Android device or a Raspberry Pi, uh, then you wanna switch this down into direct input. And when you're plugged into a Windows computer, you can make that change on the fly. So you can change its compatibility to be direct input or X input. Just know there's no rumble in here and there's also no motion controls. So uh, you'll have some limitations there. And you'll also be limited by the fact that there's only one stick on this controller, not two like you typically see on uh, most modern game controllers these days. Now this next control here is rather interesting. You can see right now I have it set to uh, XY. And if I pull up my two up view here, you'll see that I have my game controller tester running. And because it's on XY right now, it is simulating a uh, analog thumbstick versus uh, the directional pad. You can see there's no, uh, it's either 100% or nothing here. There's, there's not a lot of analog control to it, but it's simulating that stick uh, for games that would normally use the arcade stick portion of your controller. Now, if I switch this little switch here to D-pad, 
Uh, take a look now. It'll convert this into a directional pad versus a analog stick. So this thing will uh, kind of determine what uh, thing on the controller it is simulating in the course of playing your games, which is kind of cool. So you do have the ability to switch back and forth between that. Uh, there is also here a turbo button, and let me show you how that works. Let's go back to the two-up view here. And I've got X here, so when I push X, you can see it just lights up yellow. It's one push, and now I'm holding it down. But if I want to go turbo with this, I hold down the uh, X button again and then push turbo. And what that will do here is convert that button into a turbo button. But you'll notice that if I hit the uh, A button here, that one is not turbo, only the X is. If I want to disable that, I believe I just reversed the process here. And you can see now that I've held it down and hit turbo again, that turned it off. So you can assign turbo to any one of these buttons uh, as you see fit uh, as you're playing your game. So you do have some flexibility with setting the turbo up there. Uh, the pair button here is self-explanatory. This just pairs it up with Bluetooth. So when you're ready to connect it up to a new device, you hold that down. And the select button here will uh, simulate the select button on the controller, as does the start button here. So let's take a look and see how it does with the Nintendo Switch, given that that is what is unique about this version of this arcade stick. Now, I've been having a very hard time uh, getting it to pair up initially wirelessly to the Switch. So what I've been doing is uh, connecting up its cable to do that. You'll probably want to update the firmware on the arcade stick when you get it just to get that version of the firmware installed on it. But that's been, for me at least, the most reliable way to get it working here. I'm playing uh, Pocket and Tournament DS here, the demo of it. And you can see what it's like here to play a fighting game with uh, the stick. It seems to be running pretty nicely, actually. It's got a nice feel to it. It's kind of fun to play an arcade fighting game with an arcade stick here because these things really are uh, well suited for this kind of stuff. I think it'll work well with uh, Street Fighter and some of the other games with it as well. So I had some uh, good fun here playing around with the pocket and tournament demo a little bit here. And you can see you can really get your uh, buttons pushed very quickly on here. And this thing is solid enough, I think, to take a bit of a beating in the process. Now, if you want to go back to the Switch, uh, home screen here, you hold it down and then hit select and that will uh, imitate basically the home button going back home there. And another game I wanted to load up real quick here is uh, Pac-Man Championship because that's another game that does very well with an arcade stick. Let's check that out. Alright, so here is Pac-Man Champion Edition and I've been having a blast with this game with this control stick because this is how you're supposed to play Pac-Man with an actual arcade stick and this is a great modern interpretation of it. So if you haven't checked this one out yet on the Switch, uh, definitely grab a copy of it. They have it on the PlayStation 4 and the PC also. Uh, the graphics are a little better on those platforms, but uh, it's not portable as much on those platforms as it is on the Switch. So the one issue I'm running into with this game, and let me get into a spot where I can show you, is that if I uh, very rapidly tap left on the stick like this, you can see it bounces back to the right because what's happening here is I'm hitting the stick very hard in this direction, and then when it snaps back, he's moving in the opposite direction. So this, the stick is a little too springy, and as a result, it's often picking up a movement that I'm not intending to make, in this case, going in the opposite direction direction than I'm uh, trying to go in. Because in Pac-Man, of course, uh, once you set him off in a direction, he's moving in that direction. So you're often not holding your joystick in a spot. You are hitting it once, having him move in that direction, and then snapping it again to get him to change direction. So that was the one thing with the stick that I've noticed is that it is very springy. And as a result, you might find yourself uh, having an undesirable outcome in Pac-Man here. But uh, overall, it's been a great experience. I'm actually doing much better at this game now that I'm using the arcade stick than I was even with the Pro Controller. So a lot of fun. And of course, if you're playing this on the PC, you could use the stick uh, with the PC as well. The one issue on the Switch, unfortunately, though, is input lag. And let me go through some of my charts here so you can see how my testing came out on the stick. So on the Nintendo Switch, whether we were plugged in or not, I was getting input lag between 96 milliseconds and 104 milliseconds. And that is uh, going against the internal screen on the Switch because I really wanted to do an apples to apples to the Pro Controller. Uh, so by comparison, uh, the Pro Controller does about 64 milliseconds. So there's about 30 milliseconds or so of overhead on the stick that you wouldn't have if you use the Pro Controller. So that is something to keep in mind if you are really sensitive to input lag, especially for fighting games. Uh, this stick will introduce more than the Pro Controller does even when it is directly connected via USB. So 
bear that out. However, on the PC, this did exceptionally well. I was really surprised by how well it did. In fact, I got, I think, one of my lowest input lag measurements ever, and that includes even against the Xbox One controller. We got 36 milliseconds here, as you can see, when we were wired into a, a gaming PC at 144 hertz on its gaming monitor. Uh, on that same PC, same monitor, we got about 44 milliseconds on the Bluetooth connection to it. So very little lag here. I would say it's probably within the margin of error. So it really does very, very well on a PC, not so much on the Switch because I'm guessing there's something happening in between that button push and the USB output that it has to do to translate it over to something the Switch can work with. So there's a little bit of lag coming in on the Switch, unfortunately, but on the PC, it's great. However, if you are buying this for a PC, uh, that lower cost device that I mentioned at the outset might be the better option uh, unless you need the wireless, which this one has and that one does not. And then on my NVIDIA Shield TV, I got a latency of about 132 milliseconds, which is rather on the high side, although I have seen on many Android devices, that one included, that Bluetooth controllers do have a lot of lag based on however uh, the Android system works with those devices. Uh, the NVIDIA Shield controller that came with that console uh, comes in around 84 milliseconds on the same television, and that's with that TV in game mode. Uh, that particular model is the older one, so that controller connects up via Wi-Fi. So even with that, we're still seeing a little extra uh, latency to begin with, and this has a little bit more than that does. So I think the sweet spot on this one is uh, definitely the PC, but uh, it has been fun actually playing some of these arcade games on the Switch, and I haven't been noticing uh, the input lag all that much. In fact, I'm playing better on this than I am when I'm in handheld mode with the little Joy-Cons. So I think uh, there's something about the tactileness, I think, of that uh, stick here that does make it a little better. And just to remind you of my methodology with these latency tests, I take out my iPhone, which shoots video at 240 frames per second. I shoot the controller and the screen and see how long it takes for a button push to register on screen. And I've been using the same displays on the PC and on my uh, home theater setup over there over the last year or so. So we're really able to see uh, what kind of input lag each controller introduces to the mix which was why it was really fun to see uh, how this one did so much better on my PC than even the Xbox One controller did when directly connected. So I was really uh, quite pleased with that. And it's been fun uh, to do this exercise every time one of these controllers comes in. And I know viewers are getting a lot out of that as well. So all in, I like this one. I like the fact that it works with the Switch. I like the fact that I'm playing Pac-Man better than I was before, even with a little extra lag introduced to it. So I think the uh, just the tactileness, again, of that joystick stick is making the difference there. So the build quality is good, nice and heavy. Again, I wish the buttons were a little better than they are, but if I want to down the road, I can probably swap them out. I think if you are looking at this for the PC, uh, the Mayflash one is probably the better buy because it is the same hardware. Uh, you'll probably get the same latency, I'm assuming, if not maybe even a little better with less in between the uh, output and the computer. And uh, all in, it is the same device. This one, again, adds the battery and the Bluetooth wireless and the Switch support. So if you want to use it with the Switch and the PC, uh, this is probably the only game in town for that at the moment. But uh, otherwise, I think the Mayflash for PC and other console gamers might be the better option. I'll put a link to everything down below in the video description. So that's going to do it for the N30 Arcade Stick. And this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. And I'm going to go back to playing some Pac-Man now. We'll see you next time. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.